Yeah, don't be importing bears. I don't think the... Oh, these are all the things you're... Oh, the product. Hello, and welcome to the Pedrosa Travel Channel, the channel where we inspire you to travel. And to remind you always that adventure is out there. Welcome to this exciting episode about Poland. And you're probably thinking to yourself, what's so exciting about Poland? If you're an American like I am, you probably don't think much about Poland. It's probably not on the top of your travel list, but I am here to tell you that it should be. Also, I will say, if you're like me as an American, you're probably thinking, Polish history, doesn't that start around like World War II? when Germany invaded Poland and <laughs> the truth is Poland's been around for a very long time and so I wanted to just take this opportunity as a video to show you my insights of Poland and tell you why you should go to Poland, Warsaw, Poland and what I learned in Warsaw, Poland when I was there. So despite my limited knowledge about Poland, I've always found it a very fascinating place. I kind of associated it with the Eastern Bloc because it was part of Eastern Soviet Union at one time and we'll get into that. And so I recently took a day trip out from Vienna, Austria. It's a very interesting thing in Europe. You see, as an American, getting to Europe is very expensive. But once you're in Europe, you'll find that it is very cheap to travel throughout Europe. Unlike here in the United States where our states are huge, and it costs a lot of money to travel by train or by airfare, public transportation, which includes air and train in Europe, is very inexpensive. For an example, we took a one-hour flight to from Vienna, Austria, to Warsaw, Poland, the capital of Poland, in the morning, and then came back at 7 p.m. that night on a plane we left on Ryanair and we came back on Austrian Airlines and it was only $25 per segment so round trip it was $50 where are you gonna find that in the United States I don't know how that compares to other places in the world but a $50 round trip ticket to another country just seemed amazing to me okay so we made it to our Ryanair flight to Warsaw leaves in about an hour and we're just waiting for a boarding at this point. We're part of the party. The funny thing is, we were checking in on a Ryanair flight, but our plane said Lauda Airlines, and everybody in the plane, including the crew, were wearing Lauda uniforms. But the plane still got to Warsaw, Poland, so it was all good. Ryanair, you do have to watch out. Um, they have a lot of luggage re restrictions on these low budget carriers. Ryanair, we didn't have any checked in luggage, no overhead luggage. Our luggage was just under our seat. You can pay everything that you do on Ryanair or with Austrian Airlines. If it's on the budget carrier side, you have to pay extra. You're not gonna get any food, not any water. So, but we just bought some water in the airport. The, Seats were fine, and it was just a cheap way to get to Warsaw and back. Since we didn't eat breakfast since it was an early morning flight, and we were kind of hungry because they didn't give us any food on the plane, our first meal in Poland ended up actually being at McDonald's. We're here at McDonald's, yeah, AJ right. got a, some kind of Kaiser roll thing. I just got yeah. a McMuffin. They call it a like, farmer's McMuffin. Right. got stuff to do today. And, and got some water. That was 64 slotties, which I don't know how much that is in dollars. Probably 64, 32, about 16. $16. dollars. So I tried the sausage and come up and it's interesting. It has like a spicy mayo on it. And then the fry sauce is like garlic mayo sauce is what it is. The fries taste just like regular McDonald's french fries, but that's like a garlic mayonnaise sauce. We're now in the Old Town Square. As I mentioned, it was pretty easy to go to Warsaw, Poland, but you do need to think about your timing 
if you're going to go to Warsaw, Poland. For example, one of the things that we found out on our trip is we went on a Tuesday, and on a Tuesday, most of the museums are closed. So um, <laughs> that was interesting. Most of the things were closed, but it wasn't the worst thing ever because if you're a savvy traveler, if you think about it, the buildings inside might be closed, but the outside is not closed. Churches do not close. You can still see the presidential palace that we went to go visit. That's not closed. And we're going to talk about something very interesting, which was the National Museum at Warsaw, which actually on Tuesdays is free even on holidays. So we didn't pay any museum entrance fees when we were in Poland. In fact, I would like to say that the whole city of Warsaw, Poland, at least as an American comparing, was very cheap. We had pierogies because we knew that pierogies was the typical Polish dish. They are dumplings. We actually had them twice. We had Chinese pierogies with dumplings and we had the very traditional Polish pierogies complete with borscht and it was very cheap. The first set of pierogies we got them for three dollars a meal and the second one at the more fancier place the more hip trendy trendy place that was only six dollars for the whole meal it was amazing how cheap the prices are in warsaw poland so if you're looking for a cheap destination warsaw poland is the place to go i don't think it's on the map yet but i think it will be on the map soon so when you get to warsaw poland it's you will get to, hopefully you'll go into the main Chopin airport. Be careful, there are two airports in Warsaw. There's one close to the city center, which is the main Warsaw Chopin airport, and there's one farther away. If you get the one farther away, that's fine. You can take a train in. Um, it just, you need to add more time in. Luckily, we went to the main one that was closer to the city center. And from the city center, there's lots of public transportation options from the airport. Coming out of the airplane, we didn't have any luggage to get, so we just walked right out of the airport. And there was ticket machines right at the en entrance of the airport. And they are in English and in Polish. We, of course, selected the English option. We went with an all-day ticket to Poland. One important tip if you're going to buy all-day bus tickets, which are very cheap, by the way, an all-day bus ticket for us cost us... Four, it was about $4.50 US. I can't remember how much that was in Slotsky's. I'll probably have it here on the ticket. Um, but it's very important when you get that ticket. First of all, it is a very small ticket. It's only about this big. It's a very small ticket. Do not lose your ticket. And second of all, all tickets in Poland must be validated. So what happens is you buy your ticket from the machine and then on your first journey, train, bus, whatever, you need to look for a little orange box and stamp it with the date of your trip. You'll put it in a certain way and on the back it'll get a date stamp. That is very important. If your train ticket, if your all day bus pass is not validated, it is not valid for any of your trips and you can still be fined even though you paid for a bus ticket. Do not do that. And also do not lose your ticket. In general, you will not be checked for a ticket. Nobody's on the bus or the train checking for your ticket um, when you first get on the bus or train. But every once in a while, and this did happen to us on the train ride into the city center, was you will find inspectors. And on our trip to Warsaw, Poland, we were inspected. And it was a little bit scary for a little while because I told you, the train, the little day pass ticket is very small. And my wife temporarily misplaced that ticket. And we were actually detained by a ticket inspector. And she blew her whistle to have the police come. Luckily for us, by the time the police came, she found her ticket and we were able to show the ticket inspector our valid ticket and we had validated our ticket. But that was scary. For about one minute, we were detained and valid. It was a valid detainment. Um, they were very courteous. But she blew her whistle and called the police over 
and the police came and we had to show the police our valid tickets. So don't think that you can just like sneak on. And I got the all day ticket. You can get time tickets, but I got an all day ticket because I didn't want to worry about if I was on the right bus at the right time. If you get the all day ticket, it works for all the trains and all the buses within the city center of Warsaw. <laughs> There was many things that we did in Warsaw, Poland, but for the sake of this video and to kind of, because I want to talk about the history and what I learned about history, I'm actually going to talk to you about the last thing that we did. The last thing that we did in Warsaw was we went to the National Museum in Warsaw. And the National Museum in Warsaw is this huge museum that kind of shows you different artifacts of history, art, paintings, tanks, sculptures that show you and describe the Polish history. And so for me, as somebody who was trying to learn Polish history, this was a great museum to learn more about Polish history. The first thing that I learned actually in the Warsaw, National Warsaw Museum was one, on Tuesdays it's free, which was great. And two, you must, and I will emphasize must, check your coat at the cloak room. If you do not check your cloak at the cloak room, take off your jacket and leave it. A very nice but firm lady in black will escort you over to the cloak room. Cloak room. And that's what happened to me. I didn't want to take off my jacket because it's cold in Poland. The, the museum is heated, but I didn't want to like worry about my jacket getting lost. And so I didn't want to check in my jacket, but then I got escorted by security over to the cloakroom and I had to give the cloakroom my jacket. They of course gave it back to me when I was done, but it was unnecessary on my part. I should have just checked it in in the beginning. So I'm just warning you so you don't have to have the same embarrassing experience that I did there. They were very nice. I was just a little bit confused. That was on me. The first thing that we saw in the museum was the Ferris Gal Gallery. And the Ferris Gallery is an exhibition to showcase the Ferris Cathedral, which was excavated by a Polish archeologist. Now, if you know anything about the Ferris Cathedral, you're probably saying to yourself, John, isn't the, wasn't the Ferris Cathedral in the ninth century over in Egypt? What does that have to do with Polish history? And my answer is actually Poland as a country well, not as a country, but as Poland as an identity really started around the year 966. And what happened is in the year 966, at the same time this Ferris Cathedral was in operation, there was this duke called Duke Miesko, and he had joined Christianity. And so as you see these murals, you're looking at some of the most early images of Christianity. And this is what it would look like for the Polish people as they joined Christianity. Because back then, if your ruler, who was the duke at this time, was Christian, well, guess what? You were going to be Christian too, because that's the way it worked back then in the medieval times. You didn't get a choice. Whatever your ruler's religion was, that was your new religion. It was fascinating to see these early images of Christianity from the medieval times. The paintings are kind of flat, and unlike the Renaissance period, it was a little bit dreary and life was hard. Back in the medieval times, a lot of wars going on in Poland. Poland throughout its history has been a very interesting place strategically. It's in this flat set of land between many mountains in Eastern Europe and therefore it's a prime area to be taken over by other countries. And so power in medieval times in Poland changed a lot. One of the paintings that they have in the museum is called the Battle of Grunwald. The Battle of Grunwald is very interesting because it was a battle between the Teutonic Knights, aka the Holy Crusaders, and the Polish tribes. And guess what? The Polish tribes won over the Holy Crusaders. 
<laughs> one of the jokes in Poland is the Holy Roman Empire was neither holy nor Roman nor was an empire. <laughs> That's what they say in Poland about the Holy Roman Empire. And so the Polish tribes won and they were basically like, hey, take your holy crusade elsewhere. We're plenty Christian enough without you. And so there was a lot of big fights. There was a lot of steel being thrown around. Think big knights and shining steel getting thrown around. And, and it, they fought all the time. But what happened was eventually in the year 1569, what emerged was something called the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. And the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth in 1569 was really radical for its day. It was a monarchy, but it wasn't like a monarchy that Europe had ever seen before. What it was, is it was a monarchy that had elected nobles and an elected monarch. And they even had the first elections of their time. Like, to give some perspective, here in the United States, we didn't have any elections until 1776, and they were electing their monarch in 1569. And furthermore, in 1791, this commonwealth did great. The Polish, the Lithuanian Polish commonwealth was very rich. They did well. They were prosperous. And in 1791, they were the first constitution in all of Europe. The first constitution, we had our constitution, as you know, in 1781 in the United States. And in 1791, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth had their constitution. It was the first constitution in all of Europe. Unfortunately, it didn't last very long as a constitutional monarchy because in 1795, Poland got a three-way attack. The Russian Empire attacked from the east. The Kingdom of Prussia, basically Germany, attacked from the river. And then finally, from the south, the Romans attacked. And finally, from the south, the Austrians attacked. And Poland was wiped off the map as an identity. For several years, the main identity, the main part actually went to Austria. And Poland was part of the Austrian Empire from about 17, from the 1800s till basically World War I. Now, when World War I ended, Poland sought for their identity once more. I think I need to end the video here because it's getting kind of long and I'm not sure how many people really are interested in Polish history. So we're going to leave it here with the Poland being mostly part of Austria. And if people are interested, we can talk about how Poland became a country once more. So please let me know, did this topic interest you? Would you be willing to learn more about Polish history? If so, let me know in the comments below and we will see you in the next video.